This training video will introduce you to the new Queensland Class 1 Crane Permit Scheme, which provides access to a local council pre-approved network. This training video will provide an overview on the new Queensland Class 1 Crane Permit Scheme, identify the eligible vehicles, demonstrate how to submit an application via the NHVR portal, and viewing the approved networks. At the conclusion of this video, I will also outline the additional support that is available to you in regards to the new permit scheme. Overview. The NHVR, together with the Local Government Association of Queensland and the Crane Industry Council of Australia, have developed the new Queensland Class 1 Crane Permit Scheme. What is a permit scheme? Permit-based schemes cover any scheme, trial, pilot or initiative that requires are targeted at safety, efficiency and productivity outcomes for specific types of heavy vehicles. In plain English, if you can comply with the set criteria, this permit scheme provides you with permitted access to a local council pre-approved network. The approved network only includes the participating local council roads as identified on the maps. The approved network is live and will continue to be updated to increase access. As a customer, you will still be required to submit an application via the NHVR portal. The permit scheme application will then be split into two cases by the NHVR, requesting access to both state and local council roads. The state roads will require consent from TMR, however, the local council road network is pre-approved. By splitting the application into two cases, the NHVR will be able to issue the first version of the permit immediately with the local council pre-approved network while waiting for TMR's response. For more information on the Queensland Class 1 Crane Permit Scheme, please refer to the industry information sheet located on the NHVR website. The next section of this video will identify eligible vehicles for the Queensland Class 1 Crane Permit Scheme. You can only apply for this permit scheme if you're an eligible vehicle. You'll be able to identify if you're an eligible vehicle based on your TMR authority to operate or ATO document. You must be either a TMR IAP category one or TMR IAP category two to apply for this permit scheme. Some of the common vehicles configurations that fall under these categories are a three axle all-terrain crane at a maximum of 36 ton, four axle all-terrain crane at a maximum of 48 ton, five axle all-terrain crane at a maximum of 50 ton, and crane and dolly combinations at a maximum of 70 ton. Commonly on page two of your ATO document, under the comments section, you'll be able to identify what TMR IOP category your crane has been given. You can see from this example, the crane is an IOP category two. The next section of this video will provide you with a demonstration on how to apply for a Queensland Class 1 Crane Permit Scheme via the NHVR portal. So I'm just going to jump now to the NHVR portal. So just from the default home screen here and in the left side menu, I'm just going to select on the application tracker. Once I've selected on the application tracker, I'll then select on the new application button. So selecting on the new application button, it's then going to ask me to give a reference or a nickname to this application. I'm just going to call it the Queensland Class 1 Crane Permit Scheme and select OK. It will then take me to the complete six step application process. So the first thing I'm going to do is select configuration by selecting the green button here. Now, second from the last in this list, there is an actual permit scheme heading. So I must be selecting on that. And then at the very bottom of this list, I'll be selecting on the Queensland class one crane permit scheme. Okay, so that actually labels this application as uh, operating in line with the Queensland class one crane permit scheme. I will then be required to fill out all of the information under the overall tab. 
So that is the mandatory length field, the width, height, and total mass. I must include a forward projection by selecting on that field and completing the measurement. And I also must include a rear overhang as well. So once again, selecting on that field and completing the measurement. The last section on this particular page is the permit scheme free text field, which once again, I will need to type in the Queensland class one crane permit scheme. So once I've completed all of that information on the overall tab, I'll then need to select on the little icon of the crane to complete the registration and axle mass and spacings details. At this part of the portal, you can now utilize the new SPV lockdown functionality to complete all of the information that is required on this page, simply by putting in the registration number plate and completing the state that it is registered in. So you can see now that's very quickly just updated my vehicle diagram to the correct number of axles. It's completed the registration here, including the VIN and the gross vehicle mass or the GVM. Scrolling down now, I can see that it's very quickly just completed all of that axle mass and spacings, which is excellent for this demonstration because I can very quickly now move on to the rest of the application. So selecting on step two, which is the travel details. For the period from and to dates, I'll just be requesting that maximum three year duration. So from today's date to three years time, but minus one day. So that is representing those dates there represent the full three year duration that I can request. For the travel requirements, I'll be nominating yes for the return trip. And I'll also be selecting the period permit option there. For the convoy travel, I'll be selecting no. Now you will be required as the customer to nominate if you have removed any parts of the crane or select this tick box if you're carrying counterweights while operating. The last section on this page is the IAP details. So selecting yes, that you are operating in IAP and then selecting the states that you are enrolled in IAP. Once I've selected that, I can now move on to step three, which is the route details. As a customer, you will need to select the network option, which is the last option here. From there, you will only be required to select the Queensland option. That is all you'll be required to do for step three of the application. And therefore I can now move on to step four. Step four of the application requires me to read my third party requirements and just select this tick box before I move on to state that I do understand the requirements of the third party approvals. At this point in time, if you do have easy access to your ATO documents, it is recommended that you attach any relevant ATO documents by selecting the add file button here. This is not a mandatory requirement, but as I said, if you do have easy access to them, um, it may support the application process. So scrolling up now, moving on to step five, which is the additional instruction section. You'll not be required uh, to type any additional comments, but if you would like to, there is a free text field there where as the customer, you can put in any additional comments but I'll now move on to step six and the final step of the application process, which allows me to review entirely all of the application details I've put in. Coming all the way down to the bottom of the page now, and before I submit this application, I'll just need to select these last two tick boxes, which is I declare that I have read and agreed to the NHVR portal terms of use. And the last tick box here is I hereby declare that all details provided in this application are true and correct. Okay, so once I have completed all the mandatory fields and I've selected those last two tick boxes, I can submit new permit application. Okay, which will then take me onto the payment details page. Okay, so that once I've completed all of those payment details and finalized uh, the application process here, the application will then be submitted uh,
So as I said earlier, once we receive that application via the NHVR portal from the customer, the NHVR will then split it into two cases. So the first case will be requesting consent from TMR for all state roads. The second case will be for the local council network and because it is pre-approved, we'll be able to issue that permit for you just for the local council roads pretty much immediately. The next section of this video will demonstrate how to identify your approved networks and how to review the layers on the map. Once the NHVR has issued your permit, you'll be able to locate and view it from the NHVR portal permit library. On your issued permit document under the authorised routes heading, you'll be able to view the local council pre-approved network that you now have access to. Noting at this point, you will only have access to the pre-approved local council roads. You are able to utilise a TMR issued permit for state control roads in line with the new NHVR issued permit. Therefore, for a period of time while operating your crane, you may be utilising two different permits. So one issued by TMR for the state controlled roads and the other issued by the NHVR for the local council roads. So I'll jump now to just a demonstration of what your issued permit will look like. So this is draft a draft or an example. So you'll see here the first page has all of your company details and the overall details of the permit. For example, the permit start and end date. Scrolling down now past all of the vehicle information, you'll get to the authorised routes. Okay, within this first box here, you'll see there for Queensland Local Council Roads, travel is permitted on the SPV4 at 48 tonne LGA Roads Local Council Road approved network as displayed on the NHGR portal maps. And it gives you a little link there to the NHGR portal maps where you can view the approved network. So depending on what heavy vehicle combination you are, for, ex for example, a three axle, a four axle or a five axle crane, you will receive access to a different approved network. So it's very, very important as a customer that you are looking on your issued permit document to make sure that you do have access um, to the correct approved network there. Before I move on to looking at the approved network and the maps, just to finish off looking at the example here of the issued permit document, it will still have road conditions and travel conditions that you must comply with when operating. Scrolling all the way down the bottom there, also vehicle conditions as well that you must comply with all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so the most important here part here is making sure that you can comply with all of the conditions on the permit, but also just identifying what network you have access to. So in this example, it is the SPV4 at 48 tonne LGA roads approved network. So where can I view the approved network? Once you have identified your approved network access, you can either select on the link in your permit document or navigate directly to the NHGR portal route planner tool. So from your permit, you can select on this little link here that will take you directly to the NHGR portal route planner tool. Or if I just jump back into my NHGR portal, in the left side menu here, you have the information hub option. And if you select on that, you'll see that the route planner tool will appear and I can select directly on that one as well. So before I even turn on the approved network layer, I would just like to show you how you can identify the difference between a state controlled road or a local council road. So if you select on the layers tab here, one, the very first option is the state road network. And if you select on that heading and then select in the tick box, I've then turned on my state control layer network. Okay, and if I zoom into Queensland here, zoom into the Mackay area, just as an example, you can see every road that is identified as that purple color, that is a state control road. If it hasn't been identified with that colour, it means that it is a local council road. So all of these white roads are considered 
local council. And if it's been highlighted with that purple line, it means that it is a TMR state control road. So that is how you will tell the difference between a state road and a local council road. So I will keep that layer on for the purpose um, of this demonstration. I definitely recommend turning it on as your first step when viewing the approved networks. So I'll then come down in my list of layers to the permit scheme heading. And just selecting there to expand that, I can see the different approved network options. So as per my issue permit document, it said I had access to the SPV4 at 48 tonne network. So I must be selecting the correct network. And then I can see there that layer has appeared in Queensland. So I'm just gonna run through now what the different colors mean and what the different icons mean, starting first with the green shaded area. The green shaded area means that you have access to all local council roads. Okay, so every council road within that green shaded area, you have access to run on. The orange shaded area means that you still have access to all local council roads. However, there are additional conditions of operation. So you will then be required to select on the map anywhere in the green shaded area. It will then bring up a little pop-up box. Now, if it hasn't displayed on the first page, you'll just need to select over to the second, which will then in the description give you some additional conditions of operation that you must comply with when operating. Okay, so the orange shaded area means all, you have access to all local council roads, but there are some additional conditions of operation that you can get if you select on the map anywhere in that green uh, orange shaded area. The specific orange roads means that you have access and you can travel on the orange roads. And once again, if you just select on those orange roads, it will give you a little pop-up box, which will show you the conditions of operation. Okay, so orange shaded area means all roads. The specific orange roads uh, that have been identified there, you can still operate on, but once again, there are some additional conditions of operation. Any time that you see a red cross means that it is a restricted structure. So even though you have access to all council roads, you are not able to cross a restricted structure, which is that little red circle with the cross through it. You can also select on that cross if you did want to get some more information about that restricted structure. There are also some little orange structures. If I can find one, an orange structure means that it is conditional access when crossing that structure. I don't think we have any on there at the moment. But as per the legend there, that's always your key indicator of what means what. So anything orange means it's conditional access, anything green means you're good to go, and anything red is you are not able to cross that structure. If you require access to roads that are not occluded on the approved network, or you would like to request travel over a restricted structure, you will need to submit an amendment application via the NHGR portal to your existing permit. As this is a live map, prior to travel, you must review the map to ensure the level of access has not changed. So every time you're about to travel, you must have a quick look at the map to make sure uh, you can comply with all of the conditions and just make sure that there hasn't been any changes with the map. The final section of today's video will provide you with additional support contacts in regards to the Queensland Class 1 Crane Permit Scheme. Before I move on to those additional contacts, I'll just go through once again as a good opportunity to recap the entire video is some frequently asked questions. So how do I know if I'm an eligible vehicle? 
You'll be able to identify if you're an eligible vehicle based on your TMR ATO certificate. You must be either a mandatory IAP category one or a mandatory IAP category two to comply with the criteria. Sometimes on the ATO certificates as well, it will say class one or class two. So that is also in line with TMR's wording for the mandatory IAP one or mandatory IAP two. If you're concerned about um, or, or you're not sure what um, IAP category you are, feel free to send us through your ATO certificate and we'll be able to provide you with that advice. How do I get access to the local council pre-approved network? As the customer, you will be required to submit an application via the NHGR portal to receive access to the local council pre-approved network. How do I get access to state controlled roads? You may already have a TMR issued permit for state controlled roads and that permit will remain valid until it expires. If you do not have access or, or a permit for state controlled roads, the NHVR is going to include a consent request for state roads with the permit scheme application. What if my roads are not on the approved network? You will be required to submit an amendment application to the permit that the NHVR issues you requesting access to the required roads to and from the approved network. How do I request access for restricted roads or structures? You will be required to submit an amendment application for a single trip, only identifying the exact road or structure that you wish to cross. Therefore, you will not need to provide uh, your exact start or finish location. So you will simply just need to plot over, that's very, very small section, over the restricted structure. If you have any questions about the Queensland Class 1 permit scheme or about this video, please don't hesitate to contact us. Okay, so you have the NHVR call centre number there, which is 1300 my NHVR, so 1300 696 487. You have my direct contact information, so Athena Ferraro, my direct phone number and email address. You also have the senior project officer, Edith Ferraro, her direct contact number and email address, and also the NHVR delegations project webpage. For more information on the NHVR Returner Delegations Project or for the complete package of NHVR Portal Customer Essential Training videos, please refer to the NHVR Delegations Project webpage at the displayed link there that you can see. Thank you very, very much for watching this training video.